The age old question is, if AI is so smart, why can't it just improve itself infinitely? Well, imagining the possibility of that is easy, but unfortunately, we are trapped in reality. I mean, that still wouldn't stop our curiosity. So with this new paper called Self-Adapting Language Models, which aims to self-improve by generating its own fine-tuning data in hyperparameters, this might be the perfect chance for us to explore how close we are in making models that can self-improve infinitely. But before we find out why we're still far from that and have instead produced an automated benchmark Mark Maxer, with data brokers, IP restriction, and geo blocks becoming more and more common, a reliable VPN is no longer a nice to have, but something essential to navigate the internet. That's why I'd like to introduce you to Proton VPN. Proton was born in Switzerland back in 2014 when a group of scientists sets out to build an internet where privacy is the default. And fast forward to today, more than 100 million people trust the Proton ecosystem. With them being completely public funded and having no VC behind, this lets them completely lock in their goal of privacy first. But why Proton VPN? They have speed without compromise. 10 gigabytes per second servers across 110 countries, plus their VPN accelerator tech that can boost speeds up to 400%, so 4K streaming and cloud gaming feel native. They are also truly private, with no logs policy, Swiss privacy laws, and fully open source code that anyone can inspect, their service can easily put your mind to ease. With an addition of NetShield ad and tracker blocker, so you can browse, shop, and stream without creeping retargeting ads or pop-ups. Proton VPN works everywhere, ranging from your favorite streaming services and supports torrenting even if your ISP blocks it. What's even better is that with one subscription, you will receive a full ecosystem with vault-level email, cloud storage, and password manager with the plan starting at just $3.99 a month with a robust free tier so you can try before you buy. So if you're ready to get control of your own internet, check out Proton VPN with the link down in the description to start protecting your connection today. And thank you Proton VPN for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the self-improving framework the researchers proposed is actually really interesting. You start with a pre-existing passage, have an AI model invent synthetic training samples while determining the hyperparameters, and then train a LoRa module with that. If you don't know what LoRa is, it lets you fine-tune a big model by adding tiny low-rank matrices and training only those extra parameters while the main weights remain frozen. And this is commonly used in image generation for models to learn characters or art styles. But here, LoRa is basically used for simulating the effects of the synthesized training data on the main model. So by evaluating the LLM with this LoRa attached, the researchers can see whether the training data works in practice or not. They then train multiple LoRa's on data synthesized from several different passages in the squad dataset, creating a set of candidate LoRa's. Each candidate's performance is tested by attaching it to the main model to see which LoRa improves the base model the most. And the synthesized data used for the best LoRa is stored separately, while the best LoRa is passed to the next round as the base LoRa to be further or fine-tuned, so the LoRa can absorb new data while including the previous data. You then rinse and repeat this process up to about 50 times, accumulating a small synthesized dataset that was all used to train the best LoRa in their batch. This collection of synthesized data would be used to fine-tune the base model, completing one full iteration. So this research basically demonstrated that by using a LoRa to iteratively simulate the synthetics data's effects is more effective than simply learning from its own synthetic data without any rejection sampling. As shown in their experiments, it took just two iterations for Quinn 2.57b to outperform GPT 4.1 that is fine-tuned only on the synthesized passages without the rejection sampling, while achieving a 14% improvement over the baseline. I mean, you could argue that writing and training on the synthesized data derived from the training data is just a more roundabout way to train on the benchmark, but it is important to clarify that the model never actually sees the correct answers from the training data and is evaluated on completely separate test data. So yeah, maybe it's training indirectly, but on the other hand, this framework can also incorporate more self-edits. For the ARC benchmark, which contains puzzle-style abstract reasoning tasks, the researchers added options for the self-edit process to activate data augmentation tools such as rotations, flips, and color swaps. These available augmentations, together with a self-proposed learning rate, enabled a tiny 1B base model to leap from 0% accuracy using in-context learning to 72.5% after just two iterations. Well, the hand handcrafted test time training baseline still reached 100% accuracy, but this is nevertheless an impressive automated improvement. So yeah, this is the basic logic behind the self-adapting LM called SEAL. I am not gonna lie, this is probably one of the coolest attempts yet at building an automated synthetic data pipeline to have a model improve itself. And to finally answer the question that everyone is here for, how practical can this self-data generating process be? So after two or three iterations, the performance usually plateaus. That happens not because SEAL can't write useful 
both data, but because each new self-edit becomes less informative, as the self-edits are all technically drawn from the same benchmark, so the novelty drops pretty fast. Catastrophic forgetting would also creep in after a few iterations of self-edits where the model would forget old things faster than it learns. As the updates are done sequentially, so the new updates interfere destructively with past learning. And of course, time and money are additional bottlenecks too. Want to fine-tune 15 Loros just to test performance? Whoop, that would be 6 hours on 2 H100s. Not to mention how the entire SEAL setup is scaffolded by humans. For example, adding tools and augmentations are still technically human heuristics, which makes this harder to scale. Aside from all that, we still need labeled data for the model to properly reward the correct outcomes, and the reward making part is also a tricky one. The reason why Next Token Prediction got so good and scaled so well is that obtaining ground truth is incredibly easy. You simply calculate the loss for the next token. But when you move to meta learning, you basically cross into RL territory. This is because SEAL's goal is no longer simply calculating the loss for the next token, even though it still does that, but what it is actually doing is to maximize reward over time through exploration. So how the feedback signal is constructed for the model and how much of the model can interact freely with the environment determines how good the results will be. So we can put as many benchmarks for SEAL as we want, but it'll still technically be saturated within those benchmarks as it'll only learn from an environment with an evaluative signal. So this is the reason why I call this the Benchmark Maxer 3000, as the direction so far for self-generating data would basically be indirectly learning from benchmarks. But don't get me wrong, RL is probably going to get us very far in terms of capabilities and use cases. After all, GPT-10's base model would probably need to be trained with the Benchmark Maxer 3000, and the AI bros will probably tweet something like fill the AGI so OpenAI can raise another 10 trillion. But realistically, we need a better way to figure out how to create an environment and a reward system that requires minimal human heuristics. Well, that is if we are serious about meta-learning. Because all the amazing RL cases so far like AlphaGo or Dota 2 are all achieved under a heavily constrained environment. So unless we find a way to have these two work autonomously, then maybe our best bet for an AI that can self-improve infinitely is when we figure out how to make a perpetual machine. And as always, if you like this type of AI research review, you should definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the most cutting-edge AI research weekly. On it, you'll be up to date on the cool new AI research ideas that researchers around the world publish, so if that's your cup of tea, go check it out now. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.